Hello? Okay. The light a little. I don't know if that's better or worse. Welcome to the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York show. I am Michael Pinter, where I teach you how to start flipping or wholesaling houses, or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. So I got a request. I was going to answer it, and then I realized, let's do a video on it. I haven't really directly answered this in a, lot, in a while. So the question is, is Zillow good to use? Uh, if not, do you know which app is good to use? So let's talk about Zillow and all the free apps. Here's the truth, right? And you're not going to like the answer. In New York, a really densely populated area, Zillow is unreliable, completely unreliable. Okay, I, I gave an example I had. I, it cost me a fortune. I went to contract on a property in East Hampton. Now, East Hampton has $10 million houses. The Zillow value on property was two and a quarter million dollars. And I had the opportunity to buy for a million. And I thought I could wholesale it for one one or one two. Um, <clears throat> I actually put a deposit down, $100,000, which I had to litigate to get back because there was a, a title issue that the guy didn't want to give me my money back, but forget that. The actual property sold for $850,000. So Zillow was off by well over a million dollars. Now, there are many parts of the country where Zillow is relatively reliable, right? More homogenous areas, so a lot of parts of Dallas, a lot of parts of Phoenix, where the entire area was built after 1980, Zillow is pretty reliable. Within a subdivision, Zillow is pretty good. But Zillow never knows the, the, the condition of the inside of the property, right? Now, in New York, not only does Zillow not know the condition of the inside of the property, Zillow does not take into account, let's say, different school districts. So um, you, you may be in Massapequa in Amityville School District, and Zillow might use comps from Plain Edge School District. That's not going to be the same value, right? In fact, even from Massapequa and Farmingdale School Districts, if you go into Amityville School District, there's going to be a big difference. Zillow doesn't know that. Zillow doesn't know that properties that are walking distance to Orthodox synagogues in West Hempstead are going to trade for a much higher valuation than properties that are not walking distance, right, to a, to a Orthodox synagogue. Right, there's something called an Arab. I don't want to get into it, but people that can carry in that area that are Orthodox are going to going to move to that area. And if it's you're outside the Arab, which not only does Zillow not know, I don't even know the boundaries where the, where this thing is. Um, it affects where you can carry or push a stroller on Sabbath. Is going, are going to be worth less now in our areas. These are things that come up a lot: school district lines, um, walking distance to houses of worship, uh, and certainly condition. Obviously, condition is a big, big factor, right? Zillow never knows the interior condition, right? So if you have the only house that's a piece of crap and all of your neighbors are have recently redone the property, Zillow is going to figure your house is similar to those. Zillow doesn't know. So again, I would say you can sort of use it as an after-repaired value in certain parts of the country, but I would never use it completely um, in New York or the New York City area at all. Now, that doesn't mean that the Zillow number is wrong. It's going to be right sometimes, sure. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while, right? Even a broken clock is right twice a day. But the algorithm it uses isn't great. And just to give you an idea of how unreliable Zillow value is, Zillow is going to lose like billions of dollars because they bought these houses. They wanted to be an eye buyer. They figured they had all these great valuation tools and they lost their ass buying properties, right? They stop buying, they're going to sell the properties at a loss, they're going to take a billion dollar write down. So I know people that buy in other areas and they use Redfin. I know people that you buy in other areas and use Trulia. Every tool, I, I would use them all, right? So what, what I have people do is my, my CRM, which is already simply has its own valuation tool, it comes up with a number. I'll have my team look at Zillow, I'll have my team look at PropStream also, and we can, from those three, we should get an idea of what maybe the ARV would be like. But again, you've got to understand, Zillow is taking closed comparable sales, what it thinks based on square footage. That's another thing, a big thing in New York. I didn't even bring that up. Square footage in most of the country is the, is the biggest factor. You figure out a price per square foot and you multiply the square footage. Because in most of the country, you know what the square footage is, right? You buy a house, they're going to ask you what the square footage is. In New York, because of our absurd ridiculous multiple listing service that won't require people to put in square footage you have no idea what the square footage is you can look at the nassau county site but if they ever put it put an addition on that didn't get reported you don't know 
My point is, oh, I look at all these comps. I don't know what their square footage is. No one uses per square foot as, as a basis to come up with value in New York, right? So it, it's a little complicated, right? I wish we did per square foot, but we don't, right? I think now, so stupid, we, 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 we changed the whole MLS thing, right? We, we, this LIBOR in, in Long Island merged with HGAR, this Hudson Valley, and I thought it was great. And they said we're going to require square footage at least in, in Nassau County and not in Suffolk because in Nassau County there's a one website where you can get it. But then they stopped. They don't didn't require it. That sucks. I almost wanted it because if you get a few years of closed comps, then we can come up with valuations per square foot. It makes things easier to come up with valuations. Right? And I've had I've had I've had realtors call me and go, "What's the square footage on your listing?" I go, "I don't know." She goes, "Well, then how do I know to come up with a value?" I go, "Let me guess. You just moved from another place." She goes, "Yeah, how'd you know?" I go, "Because that's not how things work in New York." So Zillow's using a per square footage, and and it's not really indicative. So, for example, I bought a lot of capes many for many many years. Sometimes a cape has like an additional room in the back, an additional den. Um, now, let's say that's a 300 square foot additional structure, 30 by 10. That's a big, big room. Uh, 25 by 10 is 250 square feet. In most parts of the country, I can just figure out what that's worth, right? If everything is per square foot is an average of $300, I, and I have another 300 square feet, it's another, what is it, $9,000? I don't know. What the hell is it, $90,000? What is it? Uh, 300 times... Three hundred ninety thousand dollars. It's not how it works, right? I'd give some. I'd give some additional weight to it. I'd say and people want this, <coughs> but a four two cape without an additional den is not worth that much less than a four two cape with an additional den because that's what people are going to look for. Now, obviously, there are people who that additional den is going to be exactly what they want, but you can't figure out an exact dollar number for what it's worth because that's just not how people work in New York. People are not looking at what the square footage is. They're not. They're looking for bedrooms and bathrooms. Now, if the bedrooms are ex- exceptionally small or exceptionally big, they're going to like that. If if the if the rooms are much bigger, they're going to like that, as opposed to the rooms being smaller, which they're not going to like. But they're not going to take out their calculator and say, what's the per square foot price? Now, that is how it works in most places. You watch a lot. You watch um, HGTV. That's how it works in California and a lot of places. Hey, I'm able to add this on. I'm going to, you know, at $500 a square foot. There are... There are places in LA, a lot of places in LA, where it's a thousand dollars a square foot. Basically, you got a thousand square foot house. It's selling for a million bucks. I can add on five hundred square feet. I just gave us a five hundred thousand dollars, right? And if it costs to build is four hundred dollars a square foot, that's a great, great deal, right? A lot, there are parts of LA that I'm, I'm thinking specifically of one part where people are taking like twelve hundred, fifteen hundred square foot single stories, right? That are worth a million and a half. They're going to add a floor onto it, make it a 3,000 square foot house, and they're going to get a $3 million, or maybe even more, $4 million for that property because it's worth more. That's just not how it works in New York. I wish it was. So is there a free tool that works perfectly? No. Can you take sort of an average? I find Redfin in New York is almost always very low, at least low compared to the others. So you can look at Trulia, Zillow, which I think are owned by the same company, and Redfin, right? PropStream is a good tool, but you got to pay for it. Um, my CRM is a great tool, but you got to pay for it. Um, so you, th- those will come up with sort of after repaired values. But and this is what I was going to say before. If all of the closed comps recently are shit houses, then it's not a good ARV. It's going to be low. And if all the closed comps recently are ARV, uh, they're all redone. F- ARV means after repaired values. So somebody redoes the entire house, then your as is value is not going to be right, right? So if your house is, let's say, mediocre right it's not a piece of crap it's livable but it's not new the bathrooms are 20 years old the kitchen's 20 years old for example um and all all the closed comps in your area assuming they're accurately com- they're real comparables they're all beautiful then you're AR- yeah as this price not going to be right that's going to be an arv value but you're not going to know from zillow what comps they used right it would be great if you could say hey what are you using and look at them and then see, see all the pictures but you know, the MLS is all the multiple listing services are really cracking down on wh- wh- what information they're sharing, right? Because they realize that their strength to find, to become the place to go to, to come up with valuations was weakened when Zillow and Trulia and all these things came out. These things are only about 15, 10, 15 years old. So, like, I, on my listings now, I have to check something off if I wanted to go to Realtor.com. I, I don't mind going to Realtor.com. I'm fine with that. Um, so... The answer is, in New York, I would not use Zillow completely there are places where zillow is going to be much more accurate and zillow may be accurate in parts of new york but you cannot rely on it so i've said this from the beginning 
Everybody doing this should get licensed. Become a licensed salesperson, right? You can park your license with me. I don't charge anything for it. It costs $108 to get licensed, right? And you can look at my videos on how to do it. It's simple. It's not hard. You gotta pass a simple test. Even if you fail, you take it again. It's like $8 to take a test. And $99 for a course, 45 hours salesperson's course. Uh, you can find a Groupon for it. Get licensed and get MLS access. MLS costs about $600 for the year. That is the best way by far to come up with valuations. If you don't want to do that, you can't do that, whatever the hell is going on, you have a legal problem, then get a prop stream, um, a prop stream subscription for $99, $97 a month. I have a link below where you get a discount on it or you get a rebate on it after. So get a prop stream account and that is helpful. It's more, it's better than Zillow. Better. Not perfect and not as good as the MLS. I'd say right now it's probably 80% as good as the MLS, but it's the second best thing. Those are the only things. There is no free ride here in New York to come up with valuations. There are parts of the country where Zillow is pretty much dead on. I have not found that to be the case. And in the example I gave you was off by over a million dollars. Hope this was helpful. If you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com. If you are interested in, or, or learn to flip and wholesale.com. If you're interested in, uh, not interested, I'm sorry. If you're watching YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching any media channel, please click the thumbs up. The algorithm really helps. More people see my videos. And please keep the comments coming. I post five times a week. I usually don't know what the hell to talk about. Your questions not only let me answer them, which is the point of this channel for me to help you, but also give me food for thought for other topics to discuss. So please keep the questions coming. If it's a, And you can ask a question about anything. It does not have to be about the video you're watching. If it's something simple, I'll reply with an answer. I was about to reply with an answer on this one, but I realized I haven't covered in a while. If it's something I've covered recently, I'll send you a link to a video. If it's something I haven't covered in a while or never covered, I will do a brand new video on it. So thank you very, very much for watching.